Now we are looking at infinites, where we apply now infinite in our limits. And I have just written few illustrations is that if you have limit as x approaches zero of one over x, so it means you replace directly with your x here is zero. One over zero will be infinite. Any number divided with zero, we say to be infinite. So the same case applies here. Any number, when you divide with infinite, because x approaches infinite, will be equal to zero. It's just like you have a number divided with a very big number. You get 0, 0.00. So automatically you get it to be, if we approximate that one, will be equal to zero. So it is one divided by infinite will be zero. Again, if you divide with a negative number, again, it will be equal to zero because it will be almost approaching zero, negative 0, 0.000, so automatically we will get zero. So now, if you have limit as x approaches infinite, so you have, now we are applying in exponential. Exponential to power infinite will be an infinite number. Exponential raised to a very big number will be infinite. But when we raise this one to a very big negative number, we we'll get to zero. This can be explained further with this one. We have limit as x approaches infinite of exponential to power negative x. So in this case, this is the same as limit ex exponential to power negative infinite. So this is the same as limit one over this one. Because when you, you have number raised to power negative, it's the same as one over that one now. You change the sign. So this is the same as one over divided with a big number. You get zero. So it is one divided by a very big number, we will be able to get now, we will be able to get it zero. So if you have exponential to power x, and the x approaches zero, it is just like exponential to power zero, and then the number raised to power zero will be equal to one. So this one will explain very well on when it comes to infinite. Because without the knowledge of this one, even when you do one or two examples of the same, you may find that this one may be hard for many students to understand if you don't have the knowledge of this one that if you have one over infinite it will be infinite one over uh one over zero is infinite one over infinite you get it is zero so with that knowledge and when you have negative infinite will be the same one over negative infinite you get it is zero because this one means it is when it's appro x approaching infinite from a positive direction when x is approaching negative infinite from a, is approaching infinite from a negative direction. So we, we, we will find that when you'll be looking at our, our future video, we look at more on infinite, more on limits. We do more examples on infinite, but with this one, we can do maybe two or three examples on the same. Let's look at example one. Example one is where you have limit as x approaches infinite of x to power five. So in this one, we just have what we call direct substitution. So this will be infinite to power five. So remember here we are dealing with a very big number. You raise to power five again, it will be a very big number. So automatically you get it will be infinite number. When it comes to this one, this is the same as limit as x approaches zero from negative direction. And we have exponential one over x. So here, with the direct substitution, we assume it is zero, as x approaches zero, because in this case, we are dealing with a situation where, assume x is zero, and here is negative one. So we are looking at a situation where limit, as x approaches zero, from negative direction. So where it is approaching zero. So that's why we find that most of the cases we replace with x is equal to zero, because we assume it's almost approaching zero from negative direction. So in this case, we'll have exponential to power one over zero, where this one will be exponential to power infinite. And we said if you have exponential raised to power infinite, automatically we'll be able to get an infinite number, because this is exponential to power one over zero, and one over zero, we said in our first case is one over zero will be infinite. So exponential raised to power infinite, we'll be able to get its uh, infinite number. So we can get another one example, then I give more example on the same. So yeah, more examples on the same. Uh, we cannot be able to solve the example that we have. So you can go and try these more examples. This was uh, supposed to be example three, four, five, and six. Go and try this one. So those are how we apply limits, infinite limits in our 
limits. So uh, with those few topics on the limits, I think now you are able to have a good idea when we talk of limits, how we solve limits. And with those one now, we can be able to, to, you can be able to apply now the limits when it comes to calculus. So thanks for watching this one on limits. We shall come later and have more videos and more examples when it comes to limits. When we shall be looking at uh, differentiable, differentiability of a function, we shall look at more on infinite. And now we can be able now to proceed when it comes to calculus. Now that was just for the sake of us to be able to proceed with our more classes on calculus. So thanks for watching. You can continue to subscribe. You can continue to share your for, with, with your fellow student so that we can continue to simplify mathematics together. Now we shall look at more on calculus. Our next video will be on calculus now. We shall look at how do we differentiate a trigonometry function. In that case, we shall be able to apply limits. That's why we, I decided now to look at limits as a class by itself so that we have an idea on limits so that when we proceed now to look at how we differentiate a trigonometry, how we'll be able to differentiate when we have implicit function, inverse of a trigonometry, we'll be able to apply now limits. And I, with that little knowledge on limits, we can be able now to proceed with our calculus. So let's watch the next video when we, where we shall look at how we differentiate a trigonometric function. Continue to share with your fellow student. Don't forget to subscribe and for more videos so that we can be able to continue to simplify mathematics together.